I'm not sure if this is the single greatest movie of all time, or if it's the single worst movie of all time. Can it be both? Okay, Southland Tales is made by the same guy as Donnie Darko, and if you liked how you couldn't understand Donnie Darko, I'm sure we're off to a good start. Hold on to your hats. Now, because um, this is wildly complex, I'm actually going to set myself the additional challenge of explaining this to you in three minutes or less. So we start off watching this kid wander around a party with a camcorder through the camcorder uh, until an atomic bomb explodes. Then we get a prehistory of the future. Uh, but since it, the future takes place in 2008, it's actually an alternate history, except the movie came out in 2006, but they weren't wise enough to set it far enough in the future for it to... Yeah, anyways. So, uh, America slides into World War III, they go to war with everybody, um, because they're at war with a whole bunch of OPEC, our oil production gets cut off and we start researching some alternative energy sources. This plays a big role in the plot later. Here's gonna be a cut. The U.S. government becomes increasingly authoritarian, the individual states shut down, so you need a visa to travel in between them. Even Marxist rebels seem to be a big deal right now. As part of a scheme to win the presidential election, The Rock, I know he has a real name, but I'm not going to say it because he's still The Rock, because he's still The Rock, is marrying the senator who's running for president's daughter in a bid for a whole bunch of publicity that's going to help win California, which will decide the presidential election. Except that he now has amnesia, so nobody knows what's going on. We are now five minutes into the movie. You probably have no idea what's going on. You don't even realize the half of it. This actually starts on episode four. It's like the Star Wars thing where it starts on episode four. There's comic books out there that you have to go read before you watch this movie, or else you're going to be even more confused. I haven't read them. Oh, and did I mention this movie is actually about the end of all space and time? No? <laughs> yeah, it's about the end of the universe and it stars a bunch of idiots. It's actually really funny. Anyways, so the amnesiac has been kidnapped and he has fallen in love with Sarah Michelle Gellar, who is a porn star in this movie and hosts a talk show where her and porn other porn stars talk about war and crime and sex and death and teen horniness and the real issues that affect this world. Okay, this movie just has so many subplots and quotes and amazing one-liners, it's worth watching just for the dialogue. Just shut your brain off and laugh at the cool things they say. P.S. The porn industry coincidentally will play a large role in the end of the universe as we know it. We all saw that one coming. And now we turn to the guy from Princess Bride who goes INCONCEIVABLE a lot. In this movie, he plays a scientist who built a machine that makes wireless energy out of the tides, and it's slowing down the rotation of the Earth. Still with me? Good. The Rock and Sarah Michelle Gellar wrote some sort of revolutionary screenplay that will change the world, but it never gets produced. Instead, somebody from the NSA reads it, and she loses her mind, and she becomes convinced that she is a character, and she starts stalking The Rock because The Rock was going to star in it. Still with me? Amazing! Also, the guy from Highlander is in this movie. The guy from Highlander. Not the series, the movies, damn it. Speaking of random actors that happen to be in this movie, Stifler is in this movie. Now, he actually plays a guy who's impersonating his own twin brother playing a cop who is supposed to be driving around with The Rock while The Rock researches his role for the movie so that he can pose for some racist stuff that's going to get caught on camera along with some murders for black male purposes. I'm losing track of all this. Also, John Lovitz. Okay, listen, this movie is unspeakably screwed up, so there are parts I can't even express in human language. I'm just going to skip the second act because <laughs> it's essentially meaningless. Um, a whole bunch of people realize what's going on and everybody winds up on a large blimp except Stifler. Stifler runs into his brother, at which point it is revealed that The Rock and Stifler actually passed through an interdimensional portal that opened up because of the tides slowing down the Earth. Okay, as a result, they each have a duplicate. Now, The Rock's duplicate is dead, but Stifler's duplicate is still alive. And if they touch each other, 
the world will end. Now, The Rock has this weird dance with Sarah Michelle Gellar and Mandy Moore, while the two Stiflers grab each other's hands, and the car that they're in starts spinning, and there's a guy on top of the car who has a rocket launcher. Now, it starts spinning, and it flies up to the blimp, while the two guys inside are holding onto each other's hands while the space-time continuum collapses. Once it gets to the top, the guy with the rocket launcher shoots it at the blimp. And the universe ends. I don't know what happened either. That's all I got. Get the hell out of my camera. This movie is destroyed by sounds of identity.